Hello and welcome to another how-to video from Bathroom Machineries. Today we're working on a post-World War II crane Drexel. And today we're reinstalling the valve bodies that you may have seen us take out on a previous video. Critical thing number one, never ever try to install the valve body with the trim ring, that's this little part right here, on the valve. You want to have them looking just like this. No handle, no trim ring, just a bare valve body, hopefully rebuilt with one of our 90-201H cartridges in it, but this is the way you want to start. You should have purchased some of the 15 VBS valve body seals from us at this point in time. These are a little bit tricky to get on. They do stretch over the top of the valve body, but it's a fight. Again, here at Bathroom Machinery, you do say that you have to be an engineer to work on one of these things, because they are stubborn. It's perfectly okay to roll the rubber onto the valve body. If you can. There it goes. But what you want to make sure of is that the rolled surface of the seal is facing down on the top one and up on the bottom one. So work it all the way back, like so. Okay? At this point in time, you're ready to install it into the sink. Again, you want to have the sink off the wall because to have, do this with it on the wall is really, really difficult. We're going to fish it through. Actually, we're not going to fish it through. We're going to flip the sink over first. Okay. First off, you want to install the valve body up and through. So lift it up. This through. It won't fall out at this point in time. It's just going to sit there and rest. You want to make sure that the 45, that's this part right here, is aimed straight up. Next, you want to get the valve body seal down onto it. Again, this is a fight. So you probably aren't going to be able to see me do it because my hands are going to be in the way. Okay, we're back. It took us about 15 minutes to get this darn seal on. But basically right now what we've done is we've rolled the seal onto the valve body, but the tapered cup portion, let me grab one here real quick, is facing the wrong direction. We really need to make sure that this tapered cup part actually goes up against the porcelain part. So what we're going to do is we're going to force the entire washer down, and then we're going to roll it back and reforce it. So we're going to work on that right now. So. Here we go. Again, this is not the easiest task for the average person, so you want to make sure that you're feeling really comfortable using hand tools and struggling and using the occasional swear word while doing this. So, we've got it down there. Let's give it a roll over see if it will cooperate with us. Switch back around again. And it flipped back over, so we've got to get it back over there again. Okay, we're just about got her. Now, if you remember correctly from the other video, I spoke about a rubber, or excuse me, a uh, metal friction ring that you needed to salvage off of the old valve body. Hopefully, you've got those handy. This year, pretty soon, we're going to be using them. You can see I'm turning the valve body a little bit and using my thumbnail to force this washer down into place. And you got to do basically whatever you need to in order to get it tapered and in the right location. But remember, once you're all said and done, this 45 still needs to be pointed straight up. Okay, looks like this is pretty well ready to go. Using that salvaged friction ring, slide it back over the top. 
Then, this is a new nut. This is R number 86, 300 nut, in case you've had to cut off the old zinc nuts that Crane commonly used in these. It goes right over top of the 45 and threads on. If it'll cooperate with me. There we go. Okay. Now using our special tool 31-9943 socket wrench, you can tighten up the nut. don't want to over tighten it because you do run the risk of popping the porcelain. But this does do an excellent job. Okie dokie. Once you've got all this tightened up, now it's time to flip the sink back over and install your trim. Okay, next up is your uh, trim ring. That's R number 86600 if you've had to destroy your old one trying to get them off. It simply screws right directly on. No real need for plumber's putty in this area. The only other thing you have is one of our uh, 79S266C handles. If yours are shot, otherwise you can just use the originals. Make sure you use your nylon bushing in there to attach it right directly to the stem. That's the nylon bushing. And it's just a matter of sliding it on and putting a screw in it. Switching around. One other thing you need to note, once you have this all together, occasionally you may have another leak dripping underneath here very slightly or from the back side. On rare occasion, it does happen. You'll need to apply a little bit of plumber's putty between this gasket and the ceiling surface right here. And also do the same on the back side. You may want to consider doing it right out of the box. Normally these will seal up without any needed sealant, but if you have an irregular sink where you can see some flaws or dings or some other deformation in the sealing surface, you'll need to replace this. Excuse me, put putty on this. And thank you much for watching Bathroom Machinery's How to Do It video on Crane Drexel Sinks.